Hey guys, welcome back. We just finished up the timing belt components. Now we're gonna adjust the valves on the Subaru Forester engine. So we need to get the engine in the correct time in order to adjust the valves on each individual cylinder. Now, number one and three are on that side, two and four on this side. I'm gonna start with cylinder number two, even though you know the service manual recommends starting with number one. Um, it's the side that I'm already set up on and it's the easiest for me to access. And we need to pull this one cover off to find out where our timing marks are at. So even though we put it on in the last episode, go ahead and take it back off. Now our timing mark is still lined up with the timing mark in the cover, but we need this arrow to line up um, either straight up and down for cylinder number one, and then it goes in firing order, you know, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And I think these are one, three, two, four. So if I go straight down with my timing mark, then I can adjust cylinder number two, and then we'll just start from there. So with the engine at that location, all of the rocker arms for this cylinder should be loose. So I can take my exhaust rocker, move it up and down. Both intakes can move those up and down. So we know that we have this cylinder on TDC. You know, everything's nice and free. To adjust these, we need a box in wrench is the best, um, easiest way, and a flat bladed screwdriver. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold, the slotted section is the adjuster. It goes all the way through, but we're gonna hold that stationary. We're gonna put the box end on first, hold that stationary and break the nut loose We don't have to go far, and now I can turn the adjusting screw. Once we have it adjusted where we need it, then we can lock it down with that nut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen all of these up. Okay, the next thing we're gonna need is a set of feeler gauges. And we are going to, we're gonna need two different sizes. The intake valves are gonna be set to eight thousandths, the exhaust valve, 10 thousandths. So what we do is lift the rocker arm up a little bit and we wanna slide the feeler gauge between the adjuster and the top of the valve. Now that one doesn't quite fit in there so I need to loosen up this adjuster. And sometimes it's just the angle, um, it's hard to get them started in there. So I'm gonna get that feeler gauge installed between the rocker arm and the top of the valve stem, and then I'm gonna tighten down the adjuster. Now you don't, tight, you don't crank down on it, you just barely twist it until you feel a little bit of tension. And then now at that spot, my feeler gauge should slide in and out with a little bit of drag, and that's what I have. So I'm gonna hold that adjuster in that location and tighten the nut down. We'll do the same thing for the next cylinder. Now when you tighten that nut down, it will loosen up just slightly as it pulls tension on that adjusting screw. So make sure that your clearances are still good after you tighten the nut down. Now, we, I didn't tighten them crazy. Uh, we'll torque those when we're done. Now I'm gonna do the exhaust valve. Now the exhaust valve is on a bridged or conjoined uh, rocker arm. So one rocker arm and cam follower is going to run both of these valves. They're not independent like the intakes. So we need to make sure that, you know, we have some movement in this and this is gonna be 10 thousandths. Now I adjust the valves even if I did not put new valves in. If we just do a head gasket because of leakage, um, I still adjust the valves. Um, more than likely nobody's adjusted the valves in the past, so they're quite possibly out of adjustment anyways. I need to go a little tighter on that one.
There we go. Okay, so what I did is I turned the crankshaft 180 degrees, which is 90 degrees of the camshaft, and that gives me my next cylinder um, in the firing order, which is on the same side. So it makes it kind of nice, whichever side you're working on, um, to, to be able to do the next cylinder right after it. So these ones are really loose. I can't remember, one of these we loosened up a little bit during assembly because they seemed a little tight and I probably just loosened them up too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and break all the adjusting nuts loose. If I didn't, uh, yeah, those ones are loose already. So those are, are the ones that we loosened up. If I didn't adjust the valves, they could be excessively noisy, especially that has quite a bit of play. Or if they're too tight, I could have a misfire and potentially burn a valve. Since I already have the 10 thousandths feeler gauge out, I'll go ahead and set the exhaust valves. And now eight thousandths on the intake valve. And these torque to seven foot pounds, which is 84 inch pounds. Now that I have the valve set on this side of the engine, I'm gonna go ahead and put the valve cover and valve cover gasket on. So I cleaned up the valve covers in our hot tank. I guess our hot tank cleaned up my valve covers for me, but I need to put the new gasket in. And then we also need to install spark plug tube seals and new gaskets on our bolts. We need to make sure that the gasket is in the correct orientation when we install it. There is a part of the gasket that'll drop down. That needs to go in this valve cover where it dips. If we have this gasket flipped around the other way, it'll hump up and it won't seal properly. With the gasket installed in the valve cover, make sure our spark plug tube seals are installed on the spark plug tubes. Now, this particular engine shouldn't require any sealant on the gasket. Some of the V6 models do require you to put sealant on the front portion or the back portion. If it's a dual overhead cam, there's a couple spots, but on the single overhead cam, timing belt motor, you shouldn't have to apply sealant. Now the bolts that go through here are gonna be a shouldered bolt. That way they bottom out and they don't apply too much tension. The gasket or the rubber seal on the bolt holds tension on the valve cover against the seal. We're gonna have some short ones and some long ones. Um, I think there's two shorts and two longs, but I'll have to verify that. Or three longs. Okay, we have three short ones, and then our two longer ones are gonna go at the top. Now, I'm just gonna snug these up. I try to hold the valve cover as, center as centered as possible. And I'm not even getting them close to bottoming out on the threads. I'm just kind of giving a little bit of tension on them, working around, working this way working the valve cover down onto the cylinder head. Now these are also going to tighten down to that very low torque of five Newton meters or 3.6 foot pounds, which I believe was 43 inch pounds. So 
So basically we're just barely bottoming out that shoulder on the bolt against the cylinder head. So they're all tight, we'll double check them. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so we got the valves adjusted, we got the spark plug tube seals installed, new gasket in our valve cover. We torqued all the adjusting nuts before we put the cover on, torqued down our valve cover. I'll go ahead and button up that other side and then our next step is to get this thing installed in the vehicle and I hope everything is good to go. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.